Welcome, my viewers and my listeners of the program Celebrate Your Moment with Joy. I'm your presenter, Pastor Florence Maina, all the way from Minnesota. I want to greet you in the name of Jesus. Uh, and I want to say that I love the Lord as my personal Savior in a very radical way. I want to thank God for this day. And just before I continue, I want to remind you of my weekly schedule, Monday through Wednesday, I bring you inspirational word. Thursdays, I bring you put, uh, celebrating in the kitchen with Pastor Florence, so that, uh, because we need to be mindful of what we put in this body that God has given us as the temple of the Holy Spirit. Fridays, I bring you putting on the right gear for the weekend, because it depends on where you are and what you do that will propel you to take an action so every friday we know that most people start their weekend on fridays and so what how you prepare yourself matters a lot on what you'll be doing and so saturday and saturday i can take a break or bring you random inspirational messages today being the eighth day of the month of august and you know i always start by the end by the start of the month committing every day to god in prayer and it reminded you from the beginning of this month that number eight represents new beginning. Because God created the world and all there is thereof in seven days. In six days, on the seventh he rested, looking back on what he had created and so it was good. And so of course the eighth means it was a new chapter. I want to believe God that you have been experiencing new things in your life. They may be new things, but not the way you expect them. Maybe they are not for good. But guess what? It is still new in the sight of God. Let us start with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you and to bless you for your goodness and for your mercies and endure it forever. I want to thank you for the privilege of serving you, dear Lord. In this world we are living in, at such a time as this, I do not take it for granted. There can be ups and downs, there can be times of joy, there can be times of times of mourning, there can be times of discouragement. But through it all, you still never depart from your throne of grace. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you, King of Kings, as I share. I pray and, uh, for every person under the side of my voice that today they shall be encouraged. Somebody who could be going through struggle, they shall find a word they can associate with for the glory and honor of thy name. And as your servant, as I give your word, dear Lord, use me as a vessel. I pray that I may decrease as you increase, dear Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to thee, dear Lord. I want to lift you higher for you. I've said that if you are lifted up, you shall draw a mind to yourself. Receive all the praises, receive all the honor. I want to bless you and to glorify your holy name. And I do not want to be ignorant of the devices of the enemy who come to bring destruction to your people. That they cannot get to your word. I bite those spirits now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray that your people may be focused for the glory and honor of thy name. I also pray as you bless your people, do not pass me by. May your Holy Spirit continue to give me more inspiration and revelation of your word as I feed your people in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Today being the eighth day of the month of August 2022. I also want to back up a little bit and remind you of the word that God gave me for this year that is the year of taking over. And for you to take over, you must be purpose, you must be, be determined, you must be a person who must not fear and moving forward, trusting and, uh, you know, trusting God and looking unto God, this, uh, the, uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. 8-8-2022 August 8th is always the anniversary for me in the healthcare, many years back. That's when I got my first job in the healthcare. And uh, I have learned a lot through my job. And I've learned a lot in life. And today, I just want to share with you something that God spoke to me a while ago. And this is, be still before the Lord. Of course, when I mention that, I'm sure you know the verse I'm talking about. That verse is repeated twice, very similar. The book of Deuteronomy 14, no, Exodus, Exodus 14, 14. And also, Psalms 46, verse 10. I will read it, but I will also be challenging you to be seeking the Lord using his word and sometimes when you cannot be able to pray i always tell somebody call on the name of jesus why the bible says the bible says whoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved so without further ado because i prayed i wanna go direct to that word psalms 46 verse 10 
and I'll also read Exodus 14, Psalms 46, verse 10. And I know God will bless us. Be still before the Lord. I don't know what storms you could be going through, but know that there is a God in heaven who can still the, those uh, storms in your life. This is what the Bible says. Be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. Verse 11. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Hey. Let me back up to verse 9. He makes wars cease. Wars to cease to the edge of the earth. The bre he breaks the bow and the, and the shatra, the spear. He burns the shield with fire. Then after that, as when the Bible says, be still and know that I am the Lord. And you want to be careful and read Exodus. Exodus 14. Exodus 14. And I know God will bless us. And today being Monday, uh, I don't know what plans you have. What maybe you had planned. Whether you have been able to uh, you know, to fulfill those things. But remember, God is still on the throne. So be still before the Lord because he remains to be God. You could be going through stuff. For God to give me this word. Uh, I looked, I, I took the word of uh, the Bible. There are so many scriptures God has for us. There are so many promises God has for us. There are so many warnings God has for us. There are so many instructions God has for us. And do you know, even as a servant of God, I've read the Bible many times, but I cannot even be able to memorize or remember where it says. But as long as you know that the word of God says, you are good to go. And as I was going through situations and I, holding the word of God and this, God reminded me, be still and know that I am the Lord. That's why Joshua was told in Joshua 1.8 that this book of the law shall not depart from your heart. You shall meditate on it day and night. For you to be still before the Lord, you must be a person who know what the word of God says for your life. And you also know who you are. In Jesus' name. The Bible says, the Lord will fight for you you need only to be still. Hey. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Hey. Are you out there? Are you stuck? If you are still before God, when you are still before God, he will tell you, move on. I was driving. And I put my, my GPS to where I was going. And because I know the place, the GPS gave me a location, you know, another highway. And I kind of thought, no, I always follow this way. And for sure I did. And I came a place, one of the exits. Two exits were crossed <laughs> because of construction. My brother and my sister in the life we live in. The instructions we are given by God, but if we fail we to, to meet them, to follow them, to obey them, we go somewhere and we get stagnated. It took me longer. I took 15 more minutes than I would have taken if I followed from the beginning what the GPS told me. I don't know what God, the word of God is telling you. But I want to remind you to be still before God. And he'll whisper a word. And when he whisper, you must not stay where you are. You must be ready to move on. I want to repeat Exodus 14 and 14 again. The Bible says, the Lord will fight for you. What battle are you going through? God also told your servant, the battle is not yours. I am going to fight the battle for you. That's why God is called Jehovah Nisi who fights our battle. Hey. Jehovah Nisi, Mungu wa Israel, Hakuna Mungu kama wewe. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Nisi, Mungu wa Israel, hakuna mungu kama wewe, anakupeda, mungu wa Israel, 
Hakuna mungu kama yeye Adi ari yetu shidani ya Jehova nisi Mungu wa Israeli Hakuna mungu kama wewe na tumwamini Mungu wa Israeli Hakuna mungu kama wewe Haleluya na tumpede e Mungu wa Israeli Hakuna mungu kama wewe That song says in my national language of Swahili That there is no other God like our God We better trust him because there is no other God like him He fights our battles Now this time that the Israelites were being told to be still, it was a time they were going through stuff. And they were trying to bring Moses. Why do you, did you bring us here? I'm going to back up also uh, and start reading uh, verse 21. Uh, verse 21 of 14. It says, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and all and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry rud the waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on the right and on the left hey listen God had told the people to be still before him. There was a charge before them. There was the Red Sea ahead of them. Behind them was a chariot of Pharaoh. In between them, there seemed to be no way out. Are you stuck somewhere and you feel like there is no way out? Be still and know that God is God. He does not depart from his throne. I had to drive somewhere for a mission. And the driving took me longer. I had an appointment with somebody and I had to be read. But thank goodness I was able to communicate. I want to tell you that communication with our father is very important. Just as it was with my friend I was meeting with, we would go for a mission. I had to communicate and say, I'm running behind. You need to communicate with your father continually. The Lord already knows our needs, but he wants us to tell him. That's why the Bible says, call unto me, and I'll answer you. I'll not only answer you, but I'll show you great and hidden things. What are those hidden things? Call unto God. You know God can automatically know your needs even without you praying. But he wants you to take an action. He does not want us to be like robots. Many times when I read the Bible, and I hear what Jesus was doing when he was here for three years, or not uh, three years with his disciples. The miracles he did actually, he, he never finished the miracle himself for anybody. He visited them according to their faith. Remember the man at the pool for 38 years. He was asked, what are you doing? And he was told, I have been here. And every time, they started giving reasons. How many times do we give reasons instead of staying still and studying with the promises of God? Now here the Israelites, they were stuck. I hope if you are stuck somewhere, this message will speak to you. Do you see a Red Sea before you? Do you see like there is a chariot of Pharaoh following you? You don't see a way forward. You must be ready to move on. I'm going to repeat that word again. Exodus 14. Maybe let me start the, that in so that you know. Moses answered the, the people, do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you, you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You, all, you need only to be still. Stillness is a must for you to see the heart of God. But if you say, hey, hey, I want to tell you. Even if maybe you are cooking, uh, maybe ugali, one of our uh, f famous food, you must tell it. And when it comes to a steel, it will, be, it will be good. It will be formed to be good food to be put on the table. But not until you stir up. After stirring up, it steals up. 
my brother and my sister, you need to be still before God. Then you can start moving on. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people, the Israelites, to move on. I am telling you, as you are at the sound of my voice, move on. After you have stood still, even though there is a mountain ahead of you, God is going to be with you. He has promised I'll be with you. He has said in the book of Isaiah that I'm, I'm with you. I'm holding you with my victorious right hand. Be still and know that the Lord is God. I know in our land of Kenya, it's election uh, eva. The elections are this morning. My brother and my sister, we need to be still. It doesn't matter who come to power. God is still on the throne. Heather is going to be coming the one who not going to respect God. God has his own way of doing things. Just be still. But as you are still, you must move on and go to the polling station. Any um, Kenyan here, let me go and vote. And don't just vote. I shared the other day and I said, God does not want us to be in ignorance. Make sure that your pouring form before you are filling in, it is thumb by the crack. And for you folding, folding cracks, I am speaking an anointing that you will be full of justice and follow the instruction in Jesus' name. We are at an hour that we need to be still and know God is God. Be still and seek the face of the Lord. I want to tell you I had to stand on the word of God. And I heard God say, be still and know I am the Lord. Can you be able to be still and know that God is God? Are there battles? Are there things you hear and you don't know how to talk it out? Are there people in your life and you don't know how to deal with them? Be still and know that God is God. I was somewhere and there was a commotion. A little good commotion that needed the intervention of other people and after everything was going on i felt in my heart i should st be still why because god is in control later on i realized that god was preparing me to be an instrument of peace later on as i sat down as with one of the past the, the person who was in that commotion few days after and that person i wanna god help me not to mention the gender I, as I was sharing, that person started to spill out to me. And we continued. And that person started, you know, associating with me and speaking out the expectation in the heart. My brother, my sister, there is an anointing that come as a result of us being still before the Lord. Fighting our battles will not help. It will only aggravate anger. And anger will, can kill you. Anger will make your blood pressure to rise up. When your blood pressure li lies up, the body enters into fight mode. Fighting mode. And that's why people get heart attack, even stroke. When your blood pressure is so high, you are trying to figure out things in your own way. Be still and know that God is God. And when you are still and God fights for you, remember to give him the glory and the honor. Remember to say it is the Lord. And you can sing that this far it is God who have brought me. It's not by my own strength. It's not by my own education. It's not by my own money. It is by the power of the Lord. Then you can be able to say, for sure this far the Lord has taken me. As a singer sang and said, Mother Niwa Kwani Ebenesa, Ugo Nikuga Hau Ginete, Tioti Wa Kwa Kana Hinya Wa Kwa, Nimwa Di Wa Kwa Ugini Detie, Koroni Hinya Wa Kwa Mwele, Dige Kinya Hau Ginete, Idi Mwadani Ne Ebenesa, Nikio Diraiga Newe Hinya Wa Kwa, Madina moka doge tigire, barasioka doge tigire, ita mwadani ni ebenesa, nadari hedia tagawutaidia todo. 
Mwanani wako ni Ebenesa Ugo ni kuga hauginyete Tihoti wa kwa kana hinya wakwa Ni mwadhi wako uginyibetie That is in my mother tongue to say My God is Ebenesa Where I have reached is not by my own strength It is by the power of the Lord I want to take you back to a man I love in the Bible when I read about the character. That is a man, David, a man after God's own heart. He was not called a man after God's own heart because he was so precious. No, if anything, he was so evil. He committed adultery in with Uriah's wife and also killed Uriah to cover the sin. Yet God called him a man after my own heart. Do you know why? He was quick to go to God. Can you be quick to go to God instead of going to men when things are stir up, when battles are raging, when the storms of life are not giving you peace, when those children are not working the way you'd want them to work, when at work you are working all that you know how to work and people tell you you have not met the standard. You may not meet the standard of men. That's okay. But if you meet the standard of God, that's fine. Doing our best is all that matters. But doing your best could not be what your person, the person you are dealing with expect from you. It's okay. If somebody puts you down, you must not stay down there. And that's why this man, David, a time came. They went to war in Sikrag. Their daughters, their wives were taken captive. And the men they had gone with, they started to blame David. Are there times that you go to places and people start blaming you? You are there for peace, but they blame you. You try to do this, you are blamed. My brother and my sister is a time that you can learn to encourage yourself in the Lord because the world we are living in, so many people want to be spoon fed for like, or they want to be in diapers, even when they are mature men and women. But God is calling us to a point of maturity. That we can be able to encourage ourselves in the Lord. I want to tell you in my life there are things I go through and I look myself in the mirror and I say, Florence, I call myself not even a pastor, but I call myself Florence. This is you. You are going through this and you have done this. And I look at myself and I say, this is me. And I start encouraging myself and I say, Gomaniero to tire dire that. Gomaniero to tire dire noriaware hone dawe. Waliro neje so mudara pai ne kari pari. You have no debt between you and your sin. They were paid. That debt was paid cash by the blood of Jesus. Your down payment was done. And when you agreed to follow Jesus and say, "Yes, come into my life," either your debt was paid. Jesus paid oh, oh, to him I owe. Sin I left a crimson stain. He washes white as snow. The lewame ya mo thara vaine. Ne hawari he keira re ude mukureki de nianda bi salabani i le mari ziki ya ne hu rukabisa. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin I left a crimson stain. He washes white as snow. All you need to do is to be still before the Lord. When your name is tarnished, it's okay. As long as the records are clear in heaven, that's all it matters. The other day I shared about the Damascus experience. You could be there, somebody who God transformed, but you are, you, you, your name is tarnished and associated with your past. People can keep a record of wrongs, but God count you as a new creature from the time you said, I am sorry, God. People can keep a record of wrongs, 
But I want to tell you when you say, Lord, I come to you, I repent of my sin. He make you a new creature. Read the word of God, it says, Behold, if any man is in Christ, is a new creature. The old is gone and the new has come. That's why you need to be still before God. When you hear things, be still before God. When you hear things that can aggravate your anger, be still and know that God is in charge. As another, I've authored the book, Fear Not, God is in charge. When people speak about you, when things are not going on okay, when your account is negative, there is an additional factor from above in Jesus' name. And that additional, that is Jesus who was sent from heaven. And you are there as representing the horizontal part. Christ comes up, there is a cross. It's a sign of your victory. Hallelujah. At the cross, at the cross, where I pass all the right, and the burden of my heart, Lord, away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Ni mutene waje soda bire komenya me yama kwane ma nene ma kimenya Jesu noe waota kuni nera na kugenia your sins only Christ can forgive your sins only God can forgive. Man can forgive but not forget. But God will forgive and forget and make you a new creature. That's why Saul on the way to Damascus, oh my goodness, he had letters to persecute the Christian. But when he met the Lord, apparently he recognized God. Even the demons know about God. So when you know you are God, you must know that the devil also knows there is a God. But you must know him. You must be able to confess him. You must be able to walk in him with him hand in hand with him and he'll give you the victory by yourself you cannot make it I cannot make it alone hand in hand I walk each day hand in hand along the way walking thus I cannot stray Hard in hard with Jesus. Have you been walking wrongly? Just listening to the voices of the enemy to discourage you, to feel like you have reached the end. Let me tell you when you reach your end, that is the beginning of God. When when Saul was breathing there, he was stricken by brightness and was given instruction to go to an eye and God had already prepared him. God has prepared somebody somewhere. To hold your hand, but don't be stubborn. Don't be arrogant. Because God has somebody he always prepare for you when you come to your aid. Because you cannot walk this journey alone. If God himself said, let us make man in our own image, you need somebody you can confine with. Some people give themselves reason. Oh, people are going to spread my room. Let them do it. But you are confining not to the entire world. Even Jesus had the whole world. He had the 72, the 24, the 12, and he had the three. You cannot fail to have the three. Hello? Be still and know that the Lord is God. And then, when the Lord has fought for you, remember to be a testimony. To remember to lift others. Remember to encourage others. If there is a letter being written today, I would be, it will be in the Acts of the Apostles according to Pastor Florence. Or according to you, Magda. According to you, John. According to you, James. My brother and my sister. It's a high time we walk knowing that we shall overcome by the testimony of our mouth and by the power of the blood. The power of the blood will give you courage. You are not going to fear what is going to happen in the world. When God commissioned you to do something, you could be commissioned to do something that is very challenging. You could be sent to somebody who does not want to see you just go anyway if they kill you that's okay it's only this body they can kill be still and know that god is god and follow the instructions of the lord hey i want to repeat exodus 14 please make sure you read the entire part of it but the what God gave me for today's message was be still and know that i am the lord be still and know god is god you parent be still and know those kids ah God has your back. 
You know why I celebrate every moment with joy? Because I know, even if I cry, I'm not going to change anything about my family, about my children. But if I cry to God, God can change the situations. That's why he changed the story for the Israelites. That's why he changed the story of Hannah. Not until when Hannah went to the temple, you must go to the altar. The altar is where you kneel before God and cry to him. Not crying to your husband, not crying to your wife, but crying to the Lord. Not crying to your boss because he gave you that check. It's not the check that makes you live. It is by the grace of God. I promise I'm going to read that again. I'm going to... Pastor says, Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone? <laughs> Stubborn people say, Leave me alone. Hello? <laughs> Don't we, didn't, don't we say to you in Egypt, didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. <laughs> the spirit of saying, leave me alone, oh, that is from the enemy. Come out of, leave me alone. No, I'm not going to leave you alone. I have to give the word. That's why I come all the time. It doesn't matter where I am. There are some times I stand on the road and I start giving the word. I'm not going to leave you alone. If God tells me, be still and know the Lord, you must be still and know that God is God. They were saying, you know why they were saying that? Because they can see the Red Sea behind them, before them, and behind them, the Pharaoh of chariot. You are seeing things that are challenging you, and you are saying, leave me alone. Why didn't you leave us alone? Why didn't you leave us alone to die there? Oh, I hear many people, leave me alone. Even when you are feeding the kids, oh, leave me alone, mommy. I'm full, I'm full. Baby, you need to be fed. Leave me alone. I can't leave you alone. I'm not going to church because there are people. Come on. You're going to the altar. If Hannah went to the altar and the man of God there mistook her to be drunk, yet she was her and still. But God visited her in her stillness. Not until when you are still that you are not going to have the, you will have the peace of God. Oh, I have purpose to enjoy the peace of God. That's why I'm still before God. That's why I celebrate with joy. Every moment with joy. If you know what I go through sometimes and I'm saying, <laughs> you'll be surprised. But because I know God is in charge, he's fighting the battle for me. He's my Jehovah Nisi. I can celebrate every moment with joy. I want to aid also for our Kenyan country. When we are on this eve, we are counting hours. Whoever will come to power, we want to commit them to the hands of God. Whether they are evil or not, the heart of God is still fighting. It is powerful. It's for us to start still and see God saving us. If you have lost your dear one, I received a message. I'm on a mission somewhere. I'm waiting to start my mission. And I get a message. Somebody called me and I said, can I call you after 30 minutes? I said, no. Before you, get, you, you put them phone down, let me give you a message. One of our family members rested. A 27-year-old man, young man was given the message. But I'm still celebrating here with joy. I'm not going to bring him back to life. I've sent my condolences. I loved him. But what can I do? You must move on. When challenges are there, you must learn to move on. After you are still before God, move on. Yes. My nephew, 27-year-old, has rested. But I must still give the word. I'm not going to leave you alone. I have to remind you, be still before the Lord. I talked to the mother and I said, he has rested. He's not going to come back again. You must stand firm. And I said, grief, mourn, but mourn like people who have hope. I'm going to call the grandmother later on, I promised. I loved him, and they know that. I love our family members. It's good we love our family members. I, ca I count the cost. Counting the cost for our families. But in as much as I love, he's not going to come back to life. But those who are living, hear me, my family members, let us be still and know God is God. Mwagi has rested. He will not come back again. Let us celebrate every moment God has given us with joy. Even as we are preparing to send the condolences, to prepare for his burial, he has rested. How about you? When the time comes, how are you going to be? Remember now, this is now to my family. There is death in my family, but I'm still celebrating. I'm reminding you, you be still before the Lord. I'm being still before God. 
See, I am not sympathizing with them. Yes. It's my family member. It's sorrowful. But guess what? I was on my way to my mission work. Could I have gone back and start crying? Am I going to stop and, you know, get what I mean? So, as I wind up, I want to remind you, be still and know that God is God. When he fights a battle for you, remember to go and tell him, thank you. Make sure you give a seed offering of thanksgiving. And for you who've been complaining, leave me alone. No, we are not going to leave you alone. Parents, don't leave your children alone. Even when they don't want to see you, be there for them in Jesus' name. For you pastors, as you pastor that congregation, they say, oh, will you pastor? Continue giving the word. It's in season and out of season. Paul mentored Timothy and told him, it's in season and out of season. We are going to be parents in season and out of season. We will be pastors, ministers of the gospel in season and out of season. I'm going to be, oh, a nanti in season and out of season. For my families, when we have lost one of our family members, it's in season and out of season. I have to give the word of God. Let us be students. Know that God is God. Father, in Jesus' name, I've given your word. Holy Spirit, water this word. That every person who will be listening to it will be encouraged. Then that are walking in shaky ground, let them know you are the storm comer. And for the Red Sea ahead of that person, under the sound of my voice, and the chariots of Pharaoh behind them, they are wondering what to say, to do, where to go. Let them be still before you and give them the word they can understand. For the glory and honor of thy name, in Jesus' name, amen. I'm done. Now you are there. You have to know who you are. Personal identity is very important. You are there, you have never given your life to the Lord. My due, I'm still on a mission, but I had to get this moment and do what I've been called to do. Okay? If you're born to be a preacher, you'll be preaching on the way. Never think you'll be forsaken, for you'll be preaching on the right way. Are you traveling on the right way? Are you traveling on the right way? Are you traveling on the right way? You be traveling on the right way. If you are born to be a singer, you be singing on the way. Never think you be forsaken, or you be singing on the right way. Are you traveling on the right way? Are you traveling on the right way? Are you traveling on the right way? You'll be traveling on the right way. Are you there? Are you traveling on the right way? Which is the right way according to the word of God? Following the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your might. Maybe you are there. You have never given your life to the Lord. As I was talking to the mother of this who have left us, he told me, she told me, the rate Mwagi who left us today said, was preparing for erection and said, I am going to drink, I'm going to do this for the last time and I'm not going to do it again. I'm going to, first of all, vote. So for you who is there and you have not voted, my nephew who have rested had purpose to vote, go vote. But he had said, after we vote, I'm going to drink for the last time and I'm going to be, not be drinking. My brother and my sister, what is that decision you've been postponing? What is that decision you've been postponing? God is calling you. God is calling you. I want to pray with you. You have never given your life to the Lord. This is the time. Sometimes, you know, when we say this, people think we are scaring them so that they can come to the Lord because of fear. No. This is life. It's the reality. You have never given your life to the Lord. Maybe you are saying, when I get married, when I get a job, when I go to America, hmm, this is the time. Today is the day. Do you want to say this prayer after me? If you are in that category, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I repent of my sin. I've heard your word. I'll take it now. Forgive my sins. Write my name in the book of life and give me a desire to grow spiritually. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you are praying that prayer, you've been transformed. The old is gone and the new has come. Now start walking in the newness of life. Two things very important. Testimony of what has happened in your life. Because the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, they overcame by the power of their testimony and by the power of the blood of Jesus. Also, you need to associate yourself to a church. 
that you can call a home church where you can feel spiritually. That's very important. And now you become a new creature. I love you. God loves you the most. And as I add, I want to remind you, subscribe to my channel if you have not done so. If you have done so, continue praying for me. Share with other people who are not in my contact and they are in your contact. Make sure you check on my book, Fear Not God is in Charge. You can get it on Google Books. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it from me. I have many hard copies with me. I know there is a colleague yesterday who was asking me, I need to be going with them in my car. In my, I need to get a big bag. And I can always carry two of them. But I always have them in my car in my house. Should you go to my house and you are not there, just ask for one. But I would love to sign it. My music, I have 45 recorded songs in one flash drive. You can get one at the price of $40. You can also be able to be a blessing when you mentor somebody. I love to mentor. Hey, Pastor Aiden, you are doing a great job. God bless you. Leon, I missed to see you when I was there, but I believe God will connect us. For my spiritual daughter back home, thank you for the good work you are doing. And for my other grad, uh, uh, spiritual daughter in Seattle, keep up the good work. I was excited to see you. And for my biological kids, Moses, Esther, and David, know I love you. Yes. Keep on being focused and knowing that God will fight all your battles in Jesus' name. May the Lord God bless you. Say, wait, remember my weekly schedule Monday through Wednesday, Inspiration Word. That's this celebrating in the kitchen with Pastor Florence. Fridays, putting on the right gear for the weekend. May the Lord God bless you. Remember to celebrate every moment. Not just celebrating, but celebrating it with joy. Why? Every moment counts. Every moment matters. Thank you.